welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. Okay, let's go ahead and get the obvious out of the way, address the elephant in the room. Yes, I have been wearing sweaters instead of graphic tees on the channel. It's getting a little colder outside, so I've had to switch it up. So yeah, if you hear a little wind whistling, I'm sitting by the window and it is acting up outside here in Houston, Texas. So, oh, you weren't talking about the shirts? Oh, this, oh, oh, is it distracting? Is it too distracting for you guys today? <laughs> Yes, we have a little extra going on here. It's, it's just it's just for today. It's just for today because I thought today's book review was something that warranted a little wackiness. The book that I'm going to be reviewing today is called Lucky. Lucky by Marissa Stapley. And the hair and the hat... Uh, I'm paying homage to the main character in the book, Lucky, uh, Lucky Armstrong, who is a grifter who dons various disguises to get away with uh, numerous crimes and scams that she perpetuates throughout the book. <laughs> so without further ado, let me get my notes. So Lucky is one of the uh, Reese's book club picks. I don't know if it was from last month or if it's from this month, but I will give you a little um, blurb here about uh, of what the book is about. So Lucky Armstrong is a tough, talented grifter who has just pulled off a million dollar heist with her boyfriend, Carrie. And so this was supposed to be their last heist, right? I mean, she's been doing this since she could walk. Like her and her dad go across the country scamming people, right? So her and her boyfriend, of course, she meets a guy like her dad and carries out the same nonsense. But this was this is it. They they got them all the money they need. They're going to retire from scamming people and just go off and, you know, go on the straight and narrow. Well, Carrie ends up uh, missing or ditching her or something. She wakes up the next day after they, they're they in Las Vegas. She wakes up the next day and this dude is gone. And so is all the money and the plans. So now she's just like, oh, what do I do? I'm back at square one. But let's rewind. Um she ends up buying a lotto ticket because that's something that, you know, her and her dad, they always play lotto tickets thinking they're going to hit it big one day. And she always uses the same numbers. Well, lo and behold, she is watching the news and, you know, really trying to figure out if Carrie's been caught or what's going on. And they're all over the news because they have been caught. And so she's just put two and two together that Carrie just has left her. Her face is all over the news because they found out about the scam that the two of them ran um, that ended up getting them the million dollars where they were uh, scamming people, um, older rich people with money. And uh, I think it was a, an investment scheme, but the news had it portrayed like they were stealing uh, old people's retirement funds. So, you know, everybody's looking for them. But after this news blurb, they announced the lotto uh, numbers again. And because she had missed them the night before. And like I said, lo and behold, Lucky's numbers, she's truly, you know, living up to her name because she has won this big lottery pot worth millions of dollars. It's either comparable or more than the money that she and Carrie have scammed. But there's just one problem. She can't claim it because if she goes to claim it, then the police are going to know who she is, where she is, and then they're going to take the money and probably pay those people back, you know, which is probably what needs to happen anyway. But anyway, you know, Lucky doesn't want to go to jail. She doesn't want to get caught. So she ends up going on the run, donning many more disguises to camouflage her identity and trying to find out maybe what actually happened to Carrie. And then she starts um, thinking of people that she could maybe get to cash in the lotto ticket who won't turn her in and that will give her her money. So the author goes back and forth from the present to the past, kind of letting the reader know how Lucky's story even unfolded and how she got to where she is. And of course, it all started with her dad 
who was a scammer extraordinaire. I mean, he taught her everything that she knows. And throughout the book, even like when we go back to the past, um, Lucky has always had this like uh, longing for her mother, who her dad said, you know, she just up and left you, kid. She didn't want to be a mom anymore. So, you know, there's that. She left you with me. And like, you know, he's been a scammer all his life. I don't know what kind of mom would leave their kid with a scammer like him. And there are a lot of heartfelt, you know, stories in there. And it's just really, even though it's a fiction story and I mean, it's not that deep, but you can tell how the whole thing with the nurture versus nature, you know, that's that became the norm in her life. That's how her dad and her survived. And that's all she's ever, she ever knew how to do. That's what he taught her. And she was really good at it. But you just wonder, because there's like a, a part in the book where for a little while, she has a sense of normalcy where she goes to school. She has a friend. She lives in a house. But the whole reason they were even in that situation is because of a big lie, you know, that her dad had told them. And they were basically scamming these people. It was just her way of life. That's all, you know, she ever knew. There was a chapter in the book early on. I don't know if it was the first chapter or the second chapter, because I read this one a few weeks ago. But there's this scene, if you will, where a baby's left on the steps of a uh, nunnery. And the nun comes out because she has the baby crying and she's getting ready to take the baby. And this man comes up and he's like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. My wife left the baby here because she was going through it. She's like having stress or whatever. And um, she was saying she just didn't want to be a mother anymore. But this is my baby, you know. And he, he comes and he takes the baby and the um, nun gives, you know, him a necklace that he initially was going to pawn because... Turns out that was, you know, the first thing that Lucky's dad did with her as a baby was this scam. So then you fast forward towards the end. Like I said, she had been looking for her mother all this time. And he had lied and told her this necklace that the nun actually gave him um, to like sell to get money. He, was, he had told Lucky all this time that it belonged to her mother. So that is when like the book kind of goes off the rails for me. I really like um, kind of cat and mouse game. And I love to get in the mind of a grifter and how they're able to kind of pull the wool over someone's eyes without them being the wiser. I used to love the show Leverage and I've been watching like the reboot as well. But you know, stuff like that just all the details that have to be followed to make people believe that you're someone that you're not. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. But like I said, when we get to the end and everything's starting to close in on Lucky because she thinks she's found her mother based on what her father has been telling her all these years. And newsflash, he's in jail. Didn't see that coming. Uh, but her dad's in jail and just based on all the stories he had been telling her over the years, she goes to this town and she finds this woman who she is just certain is her mother. And that's when things kind of just go totally left. And I don't even know if it's in a good way. I mean, I never was expecting one of the big reveals at the end. And it was a good twist, but I don't know if it was a plausible twist. And you know, it's a satisfying ending, but, and y'all know me, how I am about these endings with these books. I'm always just like, I don't know if I want explosions and fireworks, but it, it was, it was wrapped up nicely and there was a re resolution for everyone involved. So there's that. I just didn't find one part of it very plausible. If you have read the book, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But overall, I enjoyed it. You know, it was a great way to kind of kick off the year with something um, that was a little dramatic. A little, there was some humor. You know, it was fast paced and um, a little suspenseful. So it kind of checked a lot of boxes when you're trying to start the year off 
right with reading. Um, it wasn't one of those books where you start reading and you kind of put it down because it's not going anywhere or you feel like, oh, I should have started another book. I was able to get through it like, I want to say in a day and a half, maybe. So yeah, it was called Lucky by Marissa Stapley. So yeah, if you like books that are, you know, like cat and mouse type books, uh, books that have twists and turns, books that have uh, past and present um, storylines, you know, where there's a lot of flashbacks because there are a lot of flashbacks. Um, if you like books that have a good resolution um, when it's all said and done, um, I guess Happily Ever After is all relative because it may not be all sunshine and rainbows. It could just be that people got their just desserts, right? It's like the people that you wanted to something to happen to them or for them to get what they had coming. You know, if, if you like books like that, then I think that you will enjoy the story of Lucky Armstrong and just be prepared. There's a twist at the end that you may or may not see coming. Yeah, you could definitely add Lucky to your list if you are looking for a book like that. Thank you so much for tuning in to Tracy Momi Reads. And if you have read Lucky and you kind of know what I'm talking about, let's discuss it in the comments. Make sure you like this video. and. Even if you didn't like the review, come on now. You, you got to have liked this hair thing that I'm doing today. <laughs> and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel because you just never know what you're going to get. Y'all enjoy the rest of your week and have a great weekend. Bye.